Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. My partner John and I are speaking to Bill Jordan. Bill, good to see you. I, you hey, act guys. surprised, Bill. Why are you so Oh, I know. It's just when, you're, you're, when you always see, you're so kind. <laughs> and, I, and I'm and I'm still surprised when people are kind to me. So okay, just... you know what, John? We ought to work. Let's. We want to do this again, but let's not be kind. Oh. Hey, Bill. Hey, who are you? Who, who is that? <laughs> who's that goofy-looking guy with a with a hat that doesn't look worn at all? He can't be a boomer. <laughs> He's an impersonator. Yeah, I must be. I say, how about this? It's not. It's not damaged and fray. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with you anyway? I'm not wearing. I'm not wearing cargo shorts. Who am I? <laughs> right. In fact, you, you got are. rid of those cargo shorts, didn't you? Uh, I've gotten rid of one pair, maybe two pairs. I, I stumbled upon a pair yesterday that I'd need to get rid of. It's yeah, going to be a, a couple day. of years. It's going to be a sad day, man. <laughs> uh, my wife has patched up my cargo shorts for me. So I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Hey, Bill, you know I love to call you our baby boomer philosopher because... You created the book, Embrace the Boom. Yep. And if people don't know it already, uh, you've got 15 practices that they're, they're kind of, you've drawn them from everywhere, but they're kind of philosophical and they're, but they're just simply good advice to how to live your life. Yeah. And as we've I, talked I, about in the past, it doesn't matter what, it, what age it is, but right. they are for boomers. I want you to give us one for my daily living today. Give me one of your your Okay, uh, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you one that even my grandson parrots back to me oh. when we're doing something. Oh, really? And yeah, and okay. it's number 12. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And I heard this, I don't know if this was was it Peter Drucker, I think was a famous business to me. I think he may still write, I don't know. Uh, I think it came from him. And the gist of it, and I, I tell the story in the book, uh, legend has it that uh, comedian Jerry Seinfeld was approached by a young comedian, and the guy had a, a struggle. He was trying to write better jokes. And Jerry told him, if you want to write better jokes, you need to write more jokes. So he told him, go down to the office supply store, buy one of those big blank calendars you put on the wall. You know, it's just every day is just a blank square. Yeah. Put it on the wall. Day one, you write a joke. You put an X through that square. Next day, you write a joke. You put an X through that square. Next day, you write a joke. Put an X through that square. After you do it for a few days, now you've got a chain. You've created a chain. Your job is don't break the chain. Oh, interesting. That's how the guy could measure how many jokes. He just didn't miss a day of writing a joke, be it a good joke or a bad joke. But that would allow him to write better jokes. You need more to get better. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, and I think for most of Americans, when you say if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. The first topic, well, at least that comes to my mind, is the hot button topic of weight loss. You know, here we are. You know, we just got through summer. You're going to have the holidays coming up. People are worried about the weight loss. And it's a simple matter of weighing yourself. But people don't want to weigh themselves. <laughs> it's, like they, you know, it's like get on the scale. I don't know, Bill. I don't, that's that's pretty hard getting on. The, it's not physically difficult to get on the scale. It's emotionally maybe, emotionally yeah. difficult to get on the scale. Maybe mentally, and it's a, a shot to your ego. People will often say, "Well, I go by how my clothes feel." If you will get on the scale and weigh, then you know where you are. You'll know if you're gaining weight. You'll know if you're losing weight. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. It's yeah. really, really simple when it comes to that. Yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, it's interesting because to be able to measure something, which could be a whole host of different things, you, you have to deal with reality. You have to deal with what is, Yep. right? Whether yep. it's weight loss or your weight or something else. But you have to deal with what is and to measure it. It's it, mm -hmm. we think physically, but you're right. Mentally, measure it as well. Sure. And then you can manage it. Exactly. And I would recommend to you. And I think I've talked about this before. There's a book by James Clear called Atomic Habits. 
who can really get you into some good habits that you want to build on. Maybe it is weight loss. And and I bring that I bring that up because uh, my wife gave me, and it's really kind of for us. Uh, my wife sometimes tends to give me gifts that are really for us, but it's. <laughs> She gives it to me because yeah. I don't ask for anything. So Christmas comes, it's like, I don't want anything. So I'll get a, you know, so she gave me this digital scale that pairs up with your phone. It's an app. And allegedly by you sitting on the scale, it'll tell your body mass index and what percentage of you is water and all. And you know what? <laughs> really, I use it as a scale. But the point being is when I get up in the morning and I go to the bathroom and then I get on the scale. It has become a habit, so I write that down. It shoots the weight to my phone, but normally I can I can memorize it. And I will show you. I I keep every day. I come downstairs and I keep this little loose leaf spiral notebook where I write down my weight wow. and my blood pressure and pulse. Now I don't have a blood pressure problem. We started taking my dad's pulse when he was living uh, with us before he died and in 2001, but I was taking his, and I just started taking my pulse just for, or, and, or blood pressure just because, and I got into this habit of writing it down. So I would suspect if I am starting to get a blood pressure problem, I'm going to know it, but mainly I can also check my weight and make sure that I'm not going to like, for example, yesterday, I I'm trying to, to not, the highest I think I ever was, was 196. That's too heavy for me. I'm five nine. I'm not a big bone guy. I can get my you know, fingers around my wrist. I'm not a I'm not a big bone guy. So I wanted to get below 180. So I've been below 180 for a good while with intermittent fasting, which again I highly recommend. For me, it's the most effective way to to lose weight. Consult with your doctor before you do that. But I, to me, it's a it's a miracle. It's a game changer. Intermittent fasting. So I get on the scales yesterday, and I was 182.4. Well, I saw that creeping because the day before I was at 181. So yesterday I fasted until about 4 o'clock, and I had a slice of deli ham, and I had a piece of string cheese, and then for dinner I had a bowl of gazpacho. You guys know that. That's like the cold Mexican soup. It's just vegetables. It's like – it's like – it's like – eating soup as a salsa as a, it's like eating salsa as a soup rather. Yeah. Right. So, and then I weighed this morning and I was down to like, well, I got it. I wrote it down. It's 170, 179.2 from 182.4 in a day. Wow. Okay. So that's what 3.2 pounds. You think my wife is happy that I dropped three pounds in a day? <laughs> no, she's not. But it helps me manage it. And then the other thing I do, because part of my thing is I read every morning as part of my thing. And I've got a stack of, this is just me. I've got a stack of 12 books I read from every morning. And it might just be a page. It's like a devotional kind of thing. Or it's a section of a chapter, like Atomic Habits I just mentioned. I'll read a page or two where it's a section of something he's trying to teach me. And I've got my yellow highlighter and all that. There's 12 books. So after every third book, I'll do some kind of exercise and I keep a record of that. So I've got push days and pull days. I've got push ups and squats and presses and calf raises. That's a push day, a curl, uh, a pull day is curls, deadlifts, rows, and shrugs. That kind of keeps it business wise, but I am measuring it and I'm able to manage it and I can see where I'm getting stronger. And with the weight loss thing, I can see where I'm losing weight. And if I'm gaining weight, this this keeping track and weighing every day, and people say, ah, it's, I weigh once a week. You know, you can get you can get pretty out of whack in a week, especially around the holidays. If you will do this again, can't measure it. You can't manage it if you can't measure it. Uh, man, these are just two little tools that I've become rather. These become habits, no question. Yeah. These are now habits that are helping me. And it might be a hard habit to start. But in the book, Atomic Habits, he points out, and think about this, the habits that are easy to start tend to be harder on you or less beneficial down the road, whereas the habits that are hard to begin now are better for you down the road. Does that make sense? 
Uh, no, but that's a different show. <laughs> well, well, it's kind of, but say for example, for every, for breakfast in the morning, I get into a habit. I'm eating two donuts every morning for breakfast. That's a easy habit to get into. Down mm. the road, I may pay a penalty for that with weight gain or whatever else. If I eat healthy, that's kind of a hassle to, I don't know if I, or I don't want to, or maybe I want to skip breakfast. Well, that's let me I ask you a question, Bill. Are the donuts that you eat with the calorie-free hole in the middle? Oh, well, you're talking about the, uh, the yeah, the, like the power rings, the uh, the hole in the center well, of the power if the ring. hole in the middle is calorie-free, doesn't, doesn't that count for something? It counts for nothing because it's calorie-free. Oh, good. There you go. Yeah, you keep I, a record I, of that. Am I, but, am I am I making any sense? Am I making any? Sense? Yeah, obvi obviously, obviously, if you pay attention to anything you're trying to deal with on a regular basis, you've got a better chance than looking at it once every six months and then say, "Oh, geez, fifteen pounds just went up." Uh, yeah, I bet you're the kind I, of guy, I, though. When I was uh, much younger, I don't do it anymore. I used to keep one of those little spiral pads in my glove compartment and the number of uh, gallons I got at the pump and how many miles since the last time I had a fill up. Uh, of course, the car does that for you automatically now. On most of the new cars, you hit one of the buttons and it gives you the, you know, since you've owned the car, what your MPG is and things like that. But I right. remember doing that. And I don't know that it did anything for me other than kept the record. But I think things like weight control uh, and things like that, maybe a savings uh, if you're trying to put money away for something. And if you put sure. down every day, you know, I put away a buck or whatever it is, you're more likely to reach a goal than if you just say, you know what, I should start saving, take all my loose change and, and yeah. put it in a I, barrel. I, the bottom line is, is measuring is a euphemism for acknowledging what is. Yep. And examining it the way it is, re and dealing with reality. Yeah. Reality. Before yeah, you, you can live your life the way it is, or the way you think it. it should be, and you, right. you got to go with the way it is. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's good advice. Well, I tell you, the other good advice, the other good advice is the one that we hear from from uh, Bill all the time, which is uh, embrace the boom. And you got more words with that that you like to say, don't you, Bill? Well, again, embrace the boom. Boom being uh, for baby boomers. If you were born between 1946 and 1964, you're by definition a, uh, a baby boomer. And so I just kind of hatched this notion of wanting to encourage and empower and inspire my fellow members of that generation. So as I say, live your life, forget your age, and embrace, embrace. the boom. Here, here. Amen. Thanks for helping me spread the word, guys. Always a, always a pleasure to be with you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.